Hello, boys and girls. It's Greg from the Scary Spirits Podcast again, here to make you another drink. Today, we are going to make the Krampus Cocktail, which is the featured drink in today's episode. All right, so we're going to take our shaker, and we're going to add black berries. Take our muddler, and we're going to muddle those black berries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Next, we're going to add two ounces vanilla vodka. some ice to our shaker. And then we shake. to strain into our glass. Next, we're going to top the glass off with sparkling apple cranberry. Then finally, we're going to top it off with Everclear. And then we light, hopefully. Oh yeah, there's a blue flame. I can see it. Awesome sauce. The Krampus cocktail. Maybe a little too much ever clear. Yeah. A little too much ever clear. But other than that, it's very good. Thanks for watching, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. See ya. Before we begin episode number 32 of the Scary Spirits podcast, the movie Krampus. Please enjoy a little poem of warning I found on the internet entitled Night of the Krampus, A Warning to Parents. 
The feast of St. Nicholas is on the morrow, but this eve's one of dread and sorrow. Tis Krampus knocked, and he's a-coming, his feet stamping a dreadful drumming, with clanging chains and foul breath, with horny horns and stench of death, with glowing eyes and many a bell that rings of things too dark to tell. So hold your sweet little wee ones dear, and pray that they've been good this year. For if their behavior is deemed to lack, then Krampus shall put them in his sack. And I'd like to add my own personal piece of advice. For the love of all things holy, listen to Omi. And seriously, don't let the fire go out. You've been warned. Cheers. Welcome to the Scary Spirits Podcast. Please be advised that the presenters may use adult language and or discuss adult situations. This podcast is not intended for younger listeners or those that may be easily offended. So if you're ready, let's go. Hi, I'm Greg. Hey, I'm Karen. And welcome to the Scary Spirits Podcast, the podcast that combines the two very different but highly compatible worlds of scary films and alcoholic spirits. What could possibly go wrong? Indeed. How are you, Karen? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm all right. I see that you survived Black Friday. (laughs) So far, so good. Bring yeah. on Christmas. Well, surviving this the season, I mean. I don't do Black Friday. Do, yeah, I was going to say, you? I don't know. Hell no. <laughs> My nieces do, or they used to with their mom. They'd get up at 4 a.m. I just thought, that's not worth it to me. I've never done it. Never even gone out on a Black Friday. Me either. I don't believe. I'm more a Cyber Monday kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see that. I would. I like that too. But actually, I'm almost done with all my shopping already. Checked all the boxes. I have zero boxes checked. Ooh, the potential. I can drop hints. (laughs) Yeah, I don't even. (laughs) I don't even have a list, Karen. (laughs) But how many presents do you personally actually buy? Three? No, quite a bit, actually. But So your wife does not do it all for you? No. Oh, that's nice. I agree 100%. But I write the cards, I buy the gifts, I, unless it's, hey, get this thing. <laughs> that does happen every now and then if the wife is out. You wrap them too? It says, what were you going to get your whatever? What are you going to get John? Where are you going to get your mom? I'll tell her. And she's like, all right, I'll get it. But yes. you put the thought I into wrap. it. I wrap everything as well. When they open it on Christmas morning or afternoon. Yeah, or I am whenever. not surprised. Okay, I know good. what it is because I picked it. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Awesome. (laughs) I usually say what we got people. So it isn't like that, but, but to be fair, I actually enjoy it. I actually like thinking about it and finding things that are, you know, special to someone. So maybe if I didn't do that, he would do more, but because I really do like it. I like the hunt. Okay. And how was your Thanksgiving, Karen? delicious how was yours <laughs> well it was delicious of course because shelby you know she's a hella cook well i hope she had the mac and cheese i like the top part but it's crusty that's my favorite breadcrumbs or no 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 bread just crumbs. well done yep just crunchy you know, like top. baked yeah, that, you know baked you know yeah so that's like, the best has a little crust on the top and i like the crust that's the adult mac and cheese yes kids don't like that but the adults are, we like to peel off the top and give the rest of the kids. <laughs> yes. And I've started to put bacon bits in my mac and cheese at home here regularly. That's healthy. Yeah. Good. Sure. Protein. There you go. Bacon and cheddar, more or less. All right, Karen. I believe this was my choice. Was it not? Enough chit chat. Get down to it. 
<laughs> yes, it was your choice. Unless you have, have any more chit chat we need to cover. Anything? No, I don't think so. I think we've entertained everyone quite enough. Okay, so this week's was your choice. It what did you mine. choose? <laughs> I chose the 2015 film, Karen Krampus. Okay. Had you seen this before? No. I had. Until I met you, I didn't even really know about Krampus, <laughs> to be honest. Well, I mean, it was a worldwide release. You know, you probably would have seen it in the theaters. No, I mean the ads. actual. I mean the actual entity of Krampus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I guess I hadn't met you in 2015 again. Well, we met, but. <laughs> well, I mean, again, that's what I mean, again. <laughs> Although, had I? Don't know. Good question. Hmm. We'll have to look back on that and see. Yeah, don't know. Seems like a long time ago. <laughs> but me. it was only six years ago. <laughs> I know it. So. So, yeah. yeah oh, definitely. Had. Yeah, because I moved here 10 years ago. Yeah. And I think I okay. we were talking on Facebook before that about yeah. Halloween and such. Yep. Anyway, this week's was your choice. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Krampusnacht is December 5th, which is, you know, this Sunday. And we have a cocktail, Karen. Yeah, it's pretty tasty. The Krampus cocktail. You want to tell us how to make that concoction? Sure. First, we're going to need blackberries. So it's how healthy, many black like real how fruit blackberries. <laughs> extra, extra healthy. How many did you use? It didn't say. So, Karen, I put four blackberries in. <laughs> you said you put eight? I put eight. I like okay. to muddle. What can I say? Yeah, I muddled the shit out of that, though. I'm, I'm a good muddler. I never knew it, but I am. So you muddle the blackberries. Yes, and then you're going to need two ounces of vanilla vodka. Then you're going to need apple, cranberry, sparkling cider. Well, I couldn't find that. So I had sparkling apple cider and I added a little cranberry juice. Yeah. And I thought that's what I was going to have to do. But once I, I figured out it. how to search for it, like the, what the proper name was. Yeah, it was it was at my local Kroger, Karen. And then you're going to need Everclear. Dun, dun, dun. Many people's nightmare from college. Harry Buffalo. Yep. The old Harry Buffalo fiasco that everyone has in their past. What proof uh, ever clear did you use? I didn't. But you found it. I found it, but I did not use it. So I didn't look at did it. Did you buy it? I did. Okay. But you don't but know what I, it was? No, it just okay. said ever clear. All right. Whatever. Aren't, isn't it a hundred proof? Isn't that the... The Everclear I found at my local shop was 151. Oh. But I remember I, when in college, <laughs> I remember <laughs> using like 190. <laughs> right. Well, that's what they sell on college campuses back in the day. That's what they would probably sell. But I'll have to look. I didn't I didn't look. I chickened out from lighting it. Yeah. I just thought that would be a little risky. All right. So here's how you make it, Karen. You muddle the blackberries, then you add the vanilla vodka into a shaker with ice. Shake for 10 seconds, and then double strain. I did not double strain, but instructions say to double strain into a glass. Then you top the glass off with apple cranberry sparkling cider, then top that with Everclear and Ignite. And that is exactly what I did on the YouTube video. And it lit? It did light. Yeah, it burned for a while. I probably should have let it burn longer because <laughs> when I took my first drink, it was very ever cleary. <laughs> <laughs> it was warm too. So I did let it burn for a while. Interesting. But yeah, now after I burned it up, I added a little more vanilla vodka and an ice cube. And now it's good. Took the ever clear away. And I found that on Secret of the Booze, Karen. They have a YouTube mm -hmm. channel. Sounds like a good one. It is a good one. All right. Go start some fires, people. Yep. Hold on.
And we're back. Yes, we are. Karen, might you have a brief synopsis? I do. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm you never sure. You act surprised every time. I know. And I'm I, never sure. I always come through. Why? You don't trust me? Yeah, I do. Krampus from 2015. When young Max turns his back on Christmas, his lack of festive spirit unleashes the wrath of Krampus, a demonic force of ancient evil intent on punishing non-believers. That is an accurate synopsis of the film. Not necessarily an accurate description of Krampus, but whatever. It's not detailed, but it's, it's a summary. Yes, it is. All right, Karen, are you ready to get into it? Let's go. All right. Krampus or Krampus from 2015. Film starts with credits, as they usually do these days. There is the song. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas playing. And we yeah, see, and there's some entertainment going on during the credits. Yes, we see shoppers storming a store. It looks and, like Black Friday. Yes. And fighting over gifts. A couple of them are even tased, Karen. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's pretty ugly. Everybody's fighting and screaming and tackling yes. each other and running over people. It's chaos. We, I believe we see a boy with a black eye crying. <laughs> it's not the spirit of giving. Let's just say that. It's outrageous. It's the spirit of getting the best gift for your loved one, I guess. I guess. Or, you know, there are those people, Karen, that go to Black Friday sales to buy their own self a bunch of shit. I assume. I guess. I mean, you know. So next we see who we learn is Max. And he's fighting. Wait, before you get to that, they do show uh, the kids screaming on Santa's lap for pictures. Yes. And I was wondering, did you have to go to the mall for Santa pictures? Well, Karen. <laughs> kind of i think everyone knows by now that karen and i live in the cincinnati area right we grew up there yes well you <clears> still <throat> live there yes did you ever go downtown karen during christmas and see the shilato's elves and all that shit in the windows kind of reminds me of um a christmas story but that's a different movie i remember going downtown and seeing santa but you didn't sit on his lap and get pictures. Yeah I, yeah, I did. Are there any crying pictures of you on Santa's no, lap? No crying pictures of me on Santa's lap. You were digging it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I okay. was very happy to tell him everything I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious because a lot of people have those screaming, crying pictures of themselves. We did not do it. So, all right. Sorry. So, yeah, we meet Max. Yep. And he's, he's fighting. Cute kid. <laughs> Yep. Apparently his school class was there singing carols and he got in a fight with another kid right in the middle of it. I think it's the manger scene and they <laughs> they break out into a brawl. Maybe. There's angels and I think he's like Joseph or something <laughs> fighting Maybe. with a shepherd. They, they are all dressed, but it wasn't obvious to me that, you know, they were doing the Christmas story or anything. The nativity. Yeah. So next we cut back to the house and the film A Christmas Carol, as it's known in the United States, or Scrooge, as it is known in the UK, starring Alistair Sim, is playing on the TV, Karen. 1951 film. Yeah, there's cookies all over the place. Yeah, Grandma is making cookies. She's baking up a storm. Yeah, they call her Omi, but I call her Grandma. Oh, I call her Omi. Okay. Did your grandma cook like that? No. No, yeah, mine either. Neither one of them. No. Well, I only remember one. And no. My grandpa used to go to the bakery and bring us back deliciousness, but never really baked. Next, I wrote that Max likes Christmas traditions, and he wants to watch Charlie Brown, the Christmas special, or whatever the hell it is, right? Yeah, and to wrap presents. And yes. it looks like Max and his Omi have a special bond. Yeah. They both like Christmas and they establish she's German. Yes, because she 
there's lots of reading i wrote like the next line <laughs> grandma speaks in german and there's lots of reading because it's all subtitled for the most part well i just knew she said danka when the son said it looks great so i said german but yeah apparently the tradition is they all like watch the charlie bound christmas special and wrap presents and you know yeah, dad's too busy. He's a workaholic. Mom's annoyed that dad's a workaholic. So it's all kind of going to shit. And Max wants to keep the traditions growing. And family is coming. Yeah, like winter is coming. Family is coming. <laughs> and the gra- grandma, Omi, she comforts Max and asks for his letter to Santa. Yes. And she talks to Max about, you know, still believing in St. Nicholas, right? Yeah. While they're wrapping presents. Then we see Beth talking to her boyfriend, who is Max's sister, Beth, talking to her boyfriend on the Apple device. Yeah, and we find out he's only four blocks away. He is, and he tries to convince her to sneak out and come to his house because he has a big bong, Karen. (laughs) Yes, he does. But she stays. For now. And then we hear the relatives arrive with a roar, I wrote. And they all come in and it's Max's mom's sister and her family, right? Yes. Yeah. Grandma Omi is Max's father's mother. Yes. So we have two different kind of lineages on the family tree here, right? (laughs) Yes. And the sisters are very different. There's two different uh, dynamics right away. I mean, Max's family is, looks like upper middle class, you know. Okay. Has nice things, big house, and her sister is not. Not. <laughs> and they make that distinction. And surprise, she's brought Aunt Dorothy as well. Yeah, and Aunt Dorothy is comic relief. Max's mom says she's a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> That's what she calls her. Aunt Dorothy comes in and she says she needs the nog. Yeah. And then they forgot the baby in the car, Karen. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I think Tom says, isn't there another child? (laughs) (laughs) Tom is Max's dad. Then we cut to dinner and Howie Jr., who is Max's cousin, right? He's kind of a fat kid, right? He's a chunk, yeah. He burps. At the dinner table, yes. Yes, and his father is very, very pleased. Says, that's my boy, that's my boy. That's my boy. And Max's father says, yes, it is. (laughs) (laughs) So should we describe the family? I mean, I guess they they just kind of really make it obvious that, you know. So in Max's family, Max is a young kid, young boy. He has an older sister, Beth, and he has a mom and dad, Tom and Linda. Is that no? Linda's no, the sister. Tom and Sarah. I just called her mom. And then there's also Tom's mother, Omi, the German yes. grandmother is there as well. And then we have- She lives with them, I think. I yeah. think so too. And then Sarah's sister and her family arrive, who is Linda, Sarah's sister, Howard, her husband. Then we have Parker. Oh. Is it Parker and Stevie? I know it's Stevie. Twin girls. Stevie and Jordan. Jordan, that's right. All right. So there's Stevie and Jordan, who are twin girls, who are like tomboys. And we kind of are led to believe that they're that way because Howard always wanted boys and they're the oldest. And so he treated them like boys, probably. I thought, no, isn't the son the oldest? No. Then there's Howie Jr. And then there's a baby who I don't think we ever learn her baby. No, name. there's a name, but I call it the baby Chrissy. Yeah. There's the family dynamic. And the one family, the cousins, the uncle, the aunt, they have guns, they have a Hummer, they hunt, they like weapons, they're country. And it's like country and city folk kind of is what they're, they're drawing a line and they make fun of, and they make fun of each other. Kind of, they both look down on each other for being those, those people, the one sister looks down on the other one's family for being country. The other the sister, trailer trash more or less is what she calls them. But well, and then they, they think that, you know, the sister rich, rich, richies. Yeah. They don't, they are both uncomfortable with the other situation. 
not supportive. Let's just say that. So then Sarah and Dorothy have it out in the kitchen, which I think Sarah and Tom are way too nice. <laughs> you know, it's true. Yeah. But it's hard if you're the, if you're the spouse of the person whose sibling is there, you know what I mean? That adds another yeah. like, kind of layer to it. Like if it was my brother who came and acted like that, he wouldn't, well, he wouldn't be coming for one thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I mean? But again, and we've had this discussion before, you're an only. So you don't know the dynamics of making it all work for each sibling there. Yes. I, sometimes... I know what I would put up with from my sibling in my own house. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. But would you go to their house? Probably not. <laughs> so then you never really, and then, so then you lose the relationship. It's, it's an interesting so dynamic. It. Max's parents are trying hard to just get through the whole thing. Right. And Max has a letter to Santa that he and his grandmother have talked about previously. And the sisters, yeah. Jordan and Stevie see it in his back pocket. When they arrive, they see it immediately and they end up stealing it. And then they pull it out at dinner and begin reading it aloud. It's a dick move. Yeah. Especially when he gets to the part about what he wants for their parents. And <laughs> it's a sweet letter. He, it is. He, just, he doesn't ask for things. He asks for being able to spend more time with his sister, that his parents would be close again, that it would be easier for his aunt and uncle, that, you know, just nice things he wants, not... Yeah the latest toy or anything he's right he just wants christmas the way it used to be yeah and then they get in a big fight because they won't stop reading the letter and they're making fun of him well well it hits him kind of at home when he says one of the things he wishes for is that uncle howard would stop treating them like boys true <laughs> and that's when it you know comes to a head and they get in a fight and pretty much the two girls beat up max and Max says he hates Christmas and all of them, and he runs away up to his well, room. Yeah, upstairs. So dad comes in and talks to Max, and Max kind of wants to know why we have to put up with these people just because they share DNA. <laughs> and dad tells him it's only three more days. You know, they have to put up with them because they're family. It's just what you do, right? Or some shit like that. Yep. They talk about family, and dad realizes his son's upset, but you know, this is what you do. Yeah. And dad's been teased too at the dinner table by Howard. So he's yes. putting up with shit too. They're all putting up with shit. So then Max begins to put his letter in the envelope because his dad tells him, Hey, there's still time to send the letter. He begins to seal it, but then he tears it up instead. He's had enough. He throws open his window and throws the pieces of the letter out and they fly up into the air and swirl around again. Right. Did they say where this was supposed to be? I don't recall. No. I just wondered. Because as soon as he does that, clouds gather over the house and a storm starts. And yep. The wind starts howling and dark clouds. I wrote, a storm is brewing. And then all the lights go out. Power goes out in the whole town. We see one by one. Then I think it's the next morning and there's been a blizzard. And Max looks outside and he sees a snowman built by pumpkin rock, Karen. Yeah, that's a creepy snowman. And they were built by pumpkin rock. Oh, really? Yes. I th they look like it, so I didn't I don't know. know that he's credited, but I know for a fact they were. They might, he might have been credited at the end. And they're talking about what they should do. And like Dad says, I'll go talk to the neighbors or blah, blah, blah. And Mom says, well, one's in Hawaii and we can't go to the other since, since the noodle incident with Max. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wanted to know what that was. Well, it's a, it's a reference to another thing. <laughs> another thing? Yeah. Mom alludes to the noodle incident that estranged the family from a neighboring one. The noodle incident was often referred to but never explained in the Calvin and Hobbes cartoon strip. And like Krampus Calvin. also yeah. leaves it unexplained. So it's a reference to Calvin and Hobbes. Awesome. I like that. There's lots of references in this movie. I didn't even write them all down. Next, there's a knock at the door and DHL guy 
props to the DHL guy making it through the blizzard. <laughs> and he's dropping off packages. It's a fruit basket or something. Yeah, but there's already packages on the porch when he gets there. And he says he didn't deliver them. It must have been the brown guys. Yep. And it Howard, looks like a Santa bag is what it looks like. Right. And Howard and Linda answer the door, the relatives. And Howard says, why do rich people get all the free stuff? And Linda says, probably Democrats. Yep. So Beth goes to see her boyfriend. Yeah, she convinces the parents to let her walk the floor blocks because he's not answering her texts or anything. And she's, that's very unusual. So she wants to go check on him. Yes, but they tell her to, you know, be home before dark or whatever, right? Yeah, one hour she has. Next, we see Grandma Omi making hot chocolate because she says it makes everything better. Yeah, she's been keeping the fire going. I mean, it's all the lights are out and there's no heat. So, yeah, so she was I making mean, hot chocolate over the fire in the fire. Yes. And an old, I don't know, kettle like thing that big thing they used to use in Girl Scouts, I remember, because <laughs> you could put it right on the fire. Next, we see Beth walking through the snow to her boyfriend's house, and she hears haunting sounds and sleigh bells, I wrote. I just wrote, this is fucking ridiculous. It gets very I, dark quickly. I would never have let my kid go out in a blizzard. Just snow. Mm, it's cold, though. Yeah. Then she sees a figure on the roof who we know is Krampus, right? Yeah. And she screams, and it jumps from roof to roof. And chases after her. She comes upon the DHL van and she opens the door, but the driver gone. Well, she doesn't open the door. She wipes off the window, right? And sees him in there in a frozen scream. He gone. Yeah, he's frozen <laughs> in terror, it looks like. So Beth crawls underneath it to hide. And we see the Krampus hooves walking all around the van. And then it flies away. But we hear a sound, Karen. It's a jack-in-the-box, moving very slowly. Which is pretty creepy. And it pops open, but nothing pops out. But it is kind of a startle scare right there when it pops open. And then the figure comes up very slowly. And it kind of looks like some kind of evil clown, but we never see the whole face because it doesn't get that far before we cut. And we're looking at an overhead shot of the van, and it shakes all around. Right? Yeah, I just called it a creepy doll. I didn't know what it was. Next, we see more pumpkin rot snowmen in the yard of the house. They keep multiplying. Yeah, so I was wondering when I was watching this, if those are markers for the people that have been killed. But it, they aren't really explained. Nope. But I thought, oh, because they saw one and now there's multiple. So I thought as they're killing people... They're becoming these snowmen because they look all sad and scary, but I don't yes. think that's true. I think well, it's just, I don't know. It might be. <laughs> I'm kind of with you on that. Then we're in the house and Tom and Sarah, right? Sarah are worrying about Beth. Mom and dad. That's what I that's said. That's what I wrote too, but they're Tom and Sarah and she should be home by now. So Tom asks Coward, Hey, you think your Hummer can make it through the snow? We want to go find Beth. So they take Howard Summer and they go look for Beth and to check out the town, see what's going on. But Which Grandma, a Hummer, wait a minute though. A Hummer is not an inexpensive car. No, it is not. So that was kind of a weird choice for them to have, don't you think? But anyway. Maybe. But Grandma Omi begs them not to go, saying it's too dangerous. They should wait until after the storm. Yeah, and Max holds her hand. And you see her hand shaking. Yes. So you know something's up with Omi. But Tom and Howard decide to go anyway. They're driving. And they come upon a snow plow blocking the road. They get out to examine it. And they open up the cab. And it's empty, except for some presents in the passenger seat. The keys are still in the ignition. And apparently the window is broken in from the outside. Yeah, which Tom explains. Because... You know, he's the thinker and the right. uncle is the shooter. <laughs> right. Howard says he must have like hit something and flown out the windshield. And Tom says, no, it's broken in from the outside. Something came in. So then Howard goes to the back of his Hummer and pulls out the guns. 
from like a special container or something. What were they in? Mm. Maybe that's maybe they special they gun container <laughs> in the back of a Hummer. Well, it's just they weren't just guns sitting there. They were in cases, I guess, yeah, or yeah. something. Yeah. He has a shotgun, a pump shotgun, I think. And I think he gives Tom like a 357 Magnum handgun or something like that. Tom makes the comment, oh, it's heavy. And Howard says, yeah, it's Linda's. <laughs> gun humor. Yeah, gun humor. So they set out on foot to go look for Beth. Then we cut back to the house and they're lighting candles, a bunch of candles. Well, it's they getting have a dark. lot of candles. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do have a lot of candles. Linda sees mom's angel, quote unquote, on the Christmas tree. And she says, I didn't know you had mom's angel. And Sarah says, yeah. And then they talk about how they used to fight over it. And they begin looking at the ornaments, which are like pictures of them when they were kids. And Linda says how Sarah saved everything and whatever. Yeah. I couldn't tell if Linda was mad she had the angel or, you know. No, I think it was kind of a moment. Then they hear the pitter patter of footsteps above them. And then a loud crash. Grandma looks up the chimney. Say, oh, me knows. Next, we cut back to Howard and Tom. They arrive at Derek's house. And they go ahead and walk inside. But everything's frozen. Looks like the inside of a freezer. It does. That's what I have. Icicles everywhere. Everything's got frost on it. The whole house is covered in frost. It's frozen. And there was a gingerbread man impaled on the freezer, Karen. With a knife, yes. It looks like the chimney has exploded above the fireplace, I wrote. Howard notices the hooves in the snow, the footprints or the hoof prints. In the snow in the house. Inside yes. the house, yeah. He yes. said he's hunted a lot of game, but he's never seen hooves that large. Then they hear Beth screaming from outside. And they go out to try to find her. And while they're out there, Howard gets grabbed by something in the snow and dragged away. Well, into the snow, like kind of like snow quicksand. Yeah. You know, going down. And Tom which, tries to pull him out. It's kind of off subject, but quicksand was a big deal when we were kids. Do you know that? Do you remember reading how to get out of quicksand and stuff when you were a little kid? Mm-hmm. It was just around. It was. It was just around. It was just something you kind of knew about. <laughs> Where on earth? I, I lost a shoe in quicksand. Mm. <laughs> whole shoe i did (laughs) okay (laughs) luckily the rest of you got out i know well there were just little patches of quicksand around us (laughs) (laughs) about three inches deep i don't know but it scared me enough i ran home with one shoe (laughs) (laughs) because you were scared of quicksand well yeah that's because it was something and stepped in the mud and all of a sudden i started sinking and i pulled my foot out and my shoe was still in there i just let it go and ran home (laughs) But it's just funny because quicksand is not really something you really have to worry about, but it was everywhere kind of when we were kids. So that's what it reminded me of when he was being pulled into the snow. It was in all our cartoons and stuff. I guess. Just funny though. Yeah. That's why it was in how cartoons. How to put the, how to, that you crawl, you lay flat and you roll. You don't try just to like pull ice. yourself up. <laughs> yeah, just like slaving somebody who's like falling into ice, right? In a True. lake. Yeah. Yes. Same thing. Anyway, that's how he went down into the snow. But yeah, but Tom tries to pull him Tom out. Pulled, and he does. Well, he fires a couple shots too. And two true. The, he shoots at it. Yeah. Whatever's in the snow that's burrowing through the snow. And it run it burrows away. And he pulls Howard out. And they get back to the Hummer and he gone, Karen. Yeah, it's destroyed. Meaning it's destroyed. It's not missing. <laughs> yes, it's there, but in pieces. And on fire and crushed. And Howard yells, Lucinda! I guess that's the name of the Hummer, Karen. Yes. <laughs> Next, Howard and Tom arrive back at the house. And they try to keep everyone calm as Tom bandages Howard's leg. They send all the kids to the kitchen. And they make Aunt Dorothy go in there, too. Even though she doesn't want to. Because she did not like kids even when she was a kid. <laughs> but she teaches them how all how to make peppermint schnapps. <laughs> Yeah, and Omi tells them to keep the fire hot. And then she goes in the kitchen with them. And in the kitchen, 
Omi appears to be gathering knives and cleavers. She does. <laughs> she knows what's going on here. <laughs> None of the others do, but I, you get the feeling that she Omi knows. knows. <laughs> yep. So next, Howard and Tom tell the wives, Linda and Sarah, about what happened while they were out there. Tom asks Howard how much ammo he has. He says not a lot, although they do use a lot later in the film. So I don't know where the ammo comes from. What I would consider a lot, but maybe he doesn't consider it a lot. No, he just has a few shells and that's it. No, he said he has over a dozen plus some that he has in his pockets or something. Okay. But I just want to stop here and say, if my husband came back without my daughter and he's saying we have to hunker down and board up the windows and the doors, I would be freaking the fuck out if my kid was still there'd be no way you'd keep me in that house yeah but look I, at what look at the Howard. i don't care look what happened to howard but look would, what happened if, to their car if that Hummer. could have happened to your kid wouldn't you go out i totally would i would I not be would. in the i would not be in the house <laughs> getting blankets too. for everyone and doing all the stuff she's doing i would just i would have put every piece of clothing i owned on and gone out yeah. looking for my kid a hundred percent. I mean, I would have left. One of us would have to go out because Max is still in the house. So you have one kid in the house. So I'm, one adult is going to have to stay with Max, but the yeah. other one has to go look for the yeah, daughter. You don't give a shit about your nieces and nephews. And... Well, I do, but in their <laughs> dynamic, it didn't seem like they were that important. Okay. But Tom says they should board up the windows and stay there until the storm breaks. What's good for the many. You know, well, I right? agree that I agree that's logical, but that's not what I would have done. Yeah, he's very Spock like, isn't he? <laughs> then the kids come in and they say they heard everything they said. They begin to board up all the windows, Karen. And then Linda and Sarah have a moment. I can't remember what it was exactly, but they do. <laughs> do you remember how Linda and Sarah how like had a little bonding moment there about how they still love each other or whatever? No, but I just do. said, Max wants to know if they're all going to die. And dad says no. So, and he says, Omi is acting different. And dad yep, yep. says, you know, well, so. First Howard apologizes to Tom for thinking right. he was a spineless dick all these years. Yes. Because <laughs> apparently Tom was an Eagle Scout. and That's not good oh, enough for Howard. I, I know. <laughs> Linda s- says that. The daughter's going to be okay because she's strong like her mother. Yeah, just like yeah, her that was the moment. Right. That's yeah, that the, was moment. the moment. Sorry, I jumped ahead a bit. Yeah. And Max says something's wrong with Grandma, and then his dad tells him that Grandma always gets weird around Christmas and never wanted to talk about it. So Howard and Tom decide one of them should stay up and keep watch. So again, your kid is out in a blizzard, in the freezing cold, and. You don't know where your kid is. You going to sleep? Well, Tom does volunteer to take the first watch, but no, Howard says, no, you take, get some sleep with your family. So apparently, yeah, he goes to sleep. He does. I'm saying. Along with the rest of his family. I wouldn't. I wouldn't either, probably. I'd be screaming (laughs) out the back door or something (laughs) to try to, you know, figure out where the, where the kid is. Yeah, but Beth's tough like her mother. So next they're like watching shit on an iPad. Was it an iPad? It was a tablet. Yeah. A I tablet. Some kind of tablet. But they're watching With- cartoons and shit. Now they're listening to music. And it finally dies because the battery dies. But then I write, how are they listening or to anything when there's no fucking internet? <laughs> there's no could've power. Da- could have been no downloaded. Internet. Could have been downloaded. Yeah, I'm sure they downloaded, you know, whatever the hell they were watching. Well, if Christmas if they, songs, if they were traveling in the car, they might have might have. And everyone's asleep and the fire goes out. Yeah, it's Bing Crosby singing. <laughs> and, I, and that's just because at one point the uncle says to Tom what I wouldn't give for Bing Crosby right now. So yeah, it's just when they were in the Hummer driving out. Yeah. So it's a throwback to that scene. Then we hear sounds coming from the chimney. And a hook comes down, attached to a chain with sleigh bells and a gingerbread man. Yeah, so it comes down the chimney, you're right. And Howie Jr. sees it. 
he goes and goes to eat the gingerbread man. <laughs> yeah, it's a stereotype because he's the heavier kid that he's going to be the one who goes and grabs the gingerbread man, well, even though it's on a even though it's on a hook and chains. Well, duh. He bites it. Of course he does. Then the gingerbread man comes to alive and chains up Howie, wraps him up in chains, and he gets pulled up the chimney. And this wakes everyone up, of course, and they all try to pull him back down. And while doing that, they kick a log out from the fire, and it rolls across the floor and lands under the tree and catches the tree and all the presents on fire. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a log that's... Because the, the fire has basically gone out, but there's some embers left on the log. Enough that you would set a dry Christmas tree would go up in flames very quickly. Or anything and it does. paper. Right. Yeah, all that does. <laughs> and Howie Jr. gets pulled up the chimney. He gone. Max puts out the fire on the tree with a fire extinguisher. And Howard says it was all his fault because he fell asleep during his watch. But Grandma Omi says no. It is all their faults. And she begins to wait, tell her story. Your kid just got pulled up a chimney and everybody's just going to sit and listen to a story instead of going outside to look for my kid. You know, I, I just, I get why they have to listen to the story. And it's an important part that you can explain. But if my kid went up the chimney, you would not stop me from crawling trying to claw my way out to find out if he's outside you know but proceed but proceed but she begins to tell a story about when she was young and her family it kind of feels like world war ii ish kind of yeah maybe it's an animated kind of story we see how her family gave up she's a young girl yes they were rationing bread and shit everyone kind of gave up on christmas and hope and miracles and whatever and they're all fighting with each other. Yes. And eventually Krampus comes and drags all of her family into the underworld. And she was left to remember what happens when all hope is lost or some shit like that. Right. Am I missing anything? Can you tell that better? <laughs> no, but she says, she says, St. Nicholas is not coming. An ancient spirit, the shadow of St. Nicholas, Krampus is coming. And he comes not to reward, but to punish, not to give, but to take. And he and his helpers dragged her family to the underworld. Yes. And Krampus didn't take her. He left her as a reminder when Christmas spirit dies. And With she, the Krampus bell. She still has his bell. It says Krampus on it. Well, it says greetings from Krampus in German yes. is what it says on it. Okay, but I just saw the name when she was holding it. It's because yeah. it's a bell. It, the inscription goes around it. And then when she's done, Howard doesn't believe any of it. <laughs> he thinks it's a load of shit. <laughs> yeah, he thinks she's lost her mind. And he's going out with his gun to find Beth and his son, as you would, apparently. About time. I would have left 15 <laughs> minutes ago, but whatever. And then he goes out and we see lots more pumpkin rot snowman in the yard and creatures scurrying around. We don't get a good look at. But they all pull Howard back into the house and they lock the door. So Tom comes up with a plan, Karen. He's He's a planner. Yes. He's going to go get the snow plow and plow a way for them to get out. They will all go to the mall or someplace safe and send help for Howie and Beth. So they haven't forgotten about Howie and Beth. They're not leaving them. They're going to send help, right? Well, they hope they are. <laughs> so next we see some presents and they're filled with stuff and it jumps around. So there's something alive in these present boxes. I think these were the presents that were on the doorstep that were in the bag when the DHL guy came. But anyway, Max looks out the window with binoculars and sees the s- snowman. And then he sees Krampus himself. Yeah, off in the distance. But when he looks again, Krampus is gone. He gone. Next, we see Stevie and Jordan upstairs going to the bathroom because apparently Aunt Dorothy clogged up the one on the first floor or some shit. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Very well played, Greg. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then they hear who they think is Beth calling their names from up in the attic. I think it's the attic. Yeah. And they go up to investigate. 
and we hear screams, Karen. Tom takes his gun and goes up there. Find out what's going on. His 357 Magnum, I believe. And they all follow him. Well, Linda and Sarah follow him, right? Howard stays down because he's got a chewed up leg. Yeah, all he's the pretty other kids injured. Stay down. Yeah. Well, there's no more kids, actually, except for Max. And the little baby. Yeah, and the baby. But when they get up there, they find presents busted open in the attic. Like something escaped from the wrapped boxes. Yeah, the presents are shredded. You're right. So, and they're bursting outward like they got out. Yes. Next, they hear sounds on the first floor of the house. And Howard goes to investigate with his shotgun. And as he walks by, we see a cold air return vent is askew, Karen. It is askew. <laughs> askew. That's what I wrote. Next, we go back to the attic. And we see a giant evil clown creature eating the children. <laughs> I think it's eating so, Jordan at that point. Swallowing them whole like a snake. And, and we just see some hiking boots going into its mouth. <laughs> so I think that's Jordan. Or like a stork would eat a fish, you know, yeah. full on. Swallows it whole. Yes. Tom shoots it with his 357 Magnum. Cut back down to the first floor, Karen, and gingerbread men are shooting Howard with a nail gun in the kitchen. And the did you the angel, the possessed angel that's attacking Sarah? Next line, Karen. Okay. <laughs> An evil angel bird creature attacks them in the attic. That's what I So wrote. is that a throwback <laughs> to them talking about mom's angel? I don't know, maybe. It does attack Sarah, right? Yeah, I just thought it was a that was something special to both of them. And now it's evil and attacking them. Yeah. But an evil teddy bear attacks Linda. True. Back down to the first floor. Howard shoots the gingerbread men and they catch on fire. <laughs> They're flaming pieces of gingerbread men all over the kitchen. Back up to the upstairs. An evil robot attacks Tom. A toy robot. Yes. Yeah. Back to the downstairs. The gingerbread man come after Howard. The gingerbread man leaps towards Howard, but he's out of ammo now. So it's about right about to attack him. And the bulldog eats it. Howard's bulldog. They brought their dog. We haven't talked about the dog yet, but they brought their dog. Rosie. Next we, next we see Sarah strung up by Christmas lights and hung from a rafter by the evil angel bird creature. <laughs> right. Right. Around her neck. Yes. The Christmas lights are around her neck. And Linda sees Stevie and she jabs the knife into the teddy bear's eye that is attacking her. Then she grabs an ax, runs towards Stevie. In the process, she cuts Sarah down so she doesn't die and saves Stevie. Yeah, Linda is Wonder Woman right now here. <laughs> then Sarah shoots an evil robot that is about to attack. Then they all go back downstairs and the dog, I guess, is barking at the air vent and Max opens it so that she can go up there and we hear dog barking and fighting upstairs and then it's silent. I thought for a minute that the adults had the upper hand, but it all goes to shit again. Then the evil clown creature falls through the ceiling and falls to the first floor. The evil angel bird creature attacks Howard. Aunt Dorothy somehow gets a hold of the shotgun and shoots the evil teddy bear right in the head and then shoots the evil angel bird creature. Well, she skeet shoots it. He throws it in the air and she, she shoots it. Then lightning strikes as elves arrive. Well, Omi says elves. Elves. <laughs> and then they all start coming. Yeah, they break through the window, put out the fire in the fireplace and take the baby away. Then they chain up Aunt Dorothy and take her away. Then they put chains around the evil clown creature and pull it out just as Howard grabs onto it. So he gone too. Next, I wrote they hear a, a moose horn is what I wrote. I just, yeah, I didn't know how to describe it. I just said a horn, but it's like blowing through an antler or something, like, right? Yeah through, a, yeah, through a bullhorn. You know, you right. say bullhorn, you think of a shit bullhorn. No, this is like... Viking blowing through the horn, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's obviously not a moose because they don't have horns, but whatever. And all the elves run away. 
and we see Grandma Omi trying to light the fire in the fireplace again. But every time she lights the match, it blows out. So they all want to make a run for the snowplow again. They're getting ready to leave, and they hear loud footsteps on the roof. And the electricity starts flickering on and off. So something important's there. Right. So they all run out to go to the snowplow. But Grandma Omi stays behind. And she closes the door and locks it, boards herself in. She wants to face him. So next, we see Krampus coming down the chimney. And Omi stands firm. She does. And he opens a bag of evil toys on her. (laughs) Right? Yep. And then we cut scene, so we don't know exactly what happens. But pretty sure she gone. (laughs) Yeah, it wasn't much of a showdown. (laughs) It, there is a creepy, very creepy moment. She's just standing there staring at him, and he is right in front of her face to face, and his finger uncurls. And he sticks and he his runs, tongue out. Yeah, and he runs it along her cheek, and then he sticks his tongue out. I think it's, well, it reminded me of a snake kind of smelling to say, I know you, you know, and I'm back or something creepy like that. Then he opens the bag of toys, and that's the end of Omi. Next, we see the others trying to get to the snowplow, but those creatures burying through the snow come and get them. <laughs> Tom convinces the others to go ahead. He stops and says, go, go, go. He's going to stay there and try to take care of this, whatever's in the snow. He's shooting as much as he can. Yes. He shoots the snow creatures, that's what I'm calling them, until he is out of ammo. Then he gets pulled under. Yeah, so like, Tom's gone. Into the snow quicksand. I keep thinking of Dune. I've never seen Dune, like the original Dune. I or haven't either. Maybe I'm thinking of Tremors. You ever Tremors. Seen Tremors? <laughs> seen parts of it. The sand creatures that they come and like grab you out of the under the sand. I think they do. I think that's what I'm thinking. Tremors. So next, Linda gets pulled under, and then Sarah. Well, they put the kids in the truck. So basically, it's Max and Stevie left. They're in the truck. Yes. Which won't start, but the Max, keys, yes. their keys are in it. They're trying to start it. But apparently Max doesn't know how to drive a stick. <laughs> so he he's says? about, yeah, he's about 12. I know. But the elves pull Stevie out of the truck. And they try to grab Max and he kind of like slams the door on him. And... He fights <laughs> them off. So next Krampus comes to Max and drops his torn up letter to Santa on the ground in front of him. Max picks it up. And wrapped up inside all the paper is a Krampus bell. This says greetings from Krampus in German. And as this happens, we hear Grandma telling her story again about how she was left behind. So we know Max is the chosen one. Well, we think. I don't know. Well, that's what we, yeah, at this moment. So Max chases after Krampus and the elves. He yells at them that he takes back his wish. Well, he finds them all in a pagan circle or something. I don't know what they're doing, but (laughs) yeah, some pagan ritual. And he screams at Krampus. He he takes back his wish. He takes it all back. He yells, give me back my family. And then he throws the Krampus bell at Krampus. Then a huge hole opens up in the earth, Karen. Yeah, bell rings and the earth cracks open. Portal to the underworld. Yep. And Max goes to try to save Stevie. And Max says, take me instead. And he begins to cry. And Krampus wipes away his tears. Then they throw Stevie in the hole anyway. (laughs) Yeah, they all laugh and throw her in. (laughs) They do pause for a moment. But yeah, they all laugh and throw her in. Then Krampus grabs Max and holds him over the hole. And Max says that he's sorry. He just wanted Christmas to be like it used to be. And you almost think it was going to be okay. And Krampus drops Max into the hole. Yes, he does. Next, we see Max wakes up in his bed. Apparently, it's Christmas morning because he went to his advent calendar and it was the 25th, right? Mm-hmm. So Max goes downstairs and everyone kind of like is Scrooge. there. Scrooge. Yeah. You know, like that circles back to the movie they're watching. Right. Everyone is there, including Beth and everyone. The whole group waiting for him on Christmas morning so that they can open their presents. 
So everyone starts opening their presents. Max opens his, and it is a Krampus bell, Karen. Yeah, you think everything's all better. They're all huggy, and he's saying he had a bad dream, and you know he's just happy that it's Christmas. And as soon as he parents. opens it, everyone gets sad. We hear things that happened the previous night, right? Yeah, I think they know what it is. Yeah. They all know. Yeah. So you realize that all of it happened. Yes. Then all of a sudden the fire lights up real high and music starts playing some Christmas song. I didn't make a note of it. And then we zoom out of the house from the window and find it to be a snow globe, Karen, surrounded by other snow globes of houses on Krampus's shelves. Yeah, they're a snow globe in Krampus's house. <laughs> yeah. And then toys attack and then credits. It was a surprise ending for me. And then I there's old it, Christmas yeah. photos of the production crew and actors in the credits. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it was going to be all, everything was all better because all he right. was willing to sacrifice himself. Okay. You know, I thought, oh, that's usually when the good things happen. You know what I mean? Yep. You're willing to sacrifice yourself. So they say, okay, but. So what do you think the ending means, Karen? What's your feeling? That we're all in snow globes. <laughs> but why isn't Omi in her own snow? Why is she, <sighs> isn't she in a different snow globe than I they're don't in? Know. But there are primarily two fan theories about the ending, right? Okay. One is that they are all trapped in the snow globe condemned to repeat Christmas morning for eternity <laughs> in a twisted version of hell. That's one theory. Okay. Or two, that they are given a second chance and the snow globe is Krampus's means of watching them to be sure they don't screw up again. <laughs> okay. And you think? The first one's probably more likely. <laughs> he can only watch them in their house. So what's... If he's going to watch Maybe. for the Christmas spirit, it's got to be all over. Maybe not. Well, he can't watch. What if they all go in different directions? Does he just tune in whenever he wants to? I guess. Like TV? Yeah. I guess if it's like TV. I mean, would you know you were repeating Christmas morning every morning? Because if don't you know. didn't, that's then the it the would movie. be okay. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Well, the writer-director, Michael Doherty, who we should say also did trick or treat, right? Has refused to confirm which theory is true, but there is a tie-in comic book called The Shadow of St. Nicholas, and it oh. confirms that the happy ending is the true one. And so it's just a way for him to watch them. They all get a second chance. Okay. According to the comic. I'll take that. That's, that's a nice Christmassy ending. Correct. Did you like it the first time you saw it in the theater? Uh, well, I know my wife and I saw it in the theater. I, I'm pretty sure I liked it more than she did. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure when the movie was over, she looked at me and groaned. <laughs> <laughs> so. I like a good twist. And that was a good twist. Maybe because, yes, yeah, she, she may not have liked the ending. I think she's one that likes everything nice and neat and tied up in a bow. <laughs> right you mean she doesn't like sequel because <laughs> that's what that says right yeah but there is no sequel but there no. could have been yeah because there could be endless globes yeah and apparently in that scene with all the globes the psycho house is in one of them <laughs> and you know so all the famous houses so you know a christmas carol a wonderful life you know what i mean they're all kind of dark what could happen stories, right? I've never seen A Wonderful Life. I never really cared for the whole Scrooge story, but I don't mind it when I'm watching it, but I just, I don't I, know. That. I am a Scrooge connoisseur. I'm just going to yeah. say. <laughs> yes. I've seen the play a couple of times, you know, and I've seen multiple movies. I have about and... five or six I watch every year. It's yeah. not my favorite. No, I love it. Do you like the comedies and the, isn't there one with Bill Murray? Scrooged? Yeah. Yeah. 
That's one I always watch. But the one that's playing on the TV in the movie is probably my favorite. Maybe we should watch that one. 1951 Christmas Carol. Kind, kind of a horror. Patrick Stewart one is very good as well. Yeah. As is the George C. Scott one. And I like the Muppets one too. But <laughs> so there you go. I've seen different plays, different productions of it. The Albert Finney musical is okay, but yeah, not my favorite. Like the one they were showing on TV is probably the, you know, the classic, the best, I guess, of all of them. Although that, you know, there are parts of one that are better than parts of the other. You know, it's, there's not one that's perfect, but that one is probably the best interpretation. There are differences from the novel or the story. All right, Karen, anything you were pleasantly surprised by in this film? I was pleasantly surprised by the ending. I like a good twist. Twist. Well, you don't even know how it what it means. I mean, no, but I thought everything. To interpret was, it. I thought though it was the standard trope of everything's fine and tra la la, and then the pullback got me. You know, I liked it. Like dropping Max into the into hell didn't get you. <laughs> well, that was a twist too. You know, but you kind of thought, okay, he's going to wake up in bed, and he did. Mm. You know, so. It would have been surprising if he didn't wake up in bed, but then I thought everything was fine, but it was, it was well done that he opened the gift and it was the bell and everybody's face of horror. And then the pullback, I, I just thought it was, it's a good little twist. Yeah, I agree. Well, it's Michael Doherty. That's what he does. And the disappointments, I think is just that I don't understand the parents. <laughs> like I said, mm-hmm. I would have. Why they left their kids out there so long. Well, why they just kind of continued with life, even though their kid was out there. I just, I would never have slept. And if my kid was pulled up a chimney, I would have been crawling up the, I, you know, I don't know. Be up on the roof. Yeah. I was just a little. Makes sense. Was that, does he not have children? (laughs) I don't know. You know, like, does he not, it seems like it was written by someone who doesn't have children because I would have been inconsolable if that was happening. And I realized that, you know, there are other things going on that you have to deal with. So I guess it's hard to say, but. You know, he grew up in Columbus, Ohio. Michael Doherty. His Wikipedia page does not list anything about spouses or children. Well, there you go. He wrote it? He wrote it and directed it. Okay, he did both. All right. Yes. Well, he co-wrote it and directed it. He had two other writers with him, but he directed it. It just seemed to me that, I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to sleep if I thought my kid was freezing. I couldn't do that if I thought my cat was out there freezing. You know, like I just, <laughs> I would have been no help in that situation. I agree. That I would have been no help. <laughs> you know me no, well. That I wouldn't. I wouldn't have either. What about you? What do you really like about it? Krampus is pretty cool. He is. He's wearing a mask, so you never see his face, truly, because he's wearing a mask. The snowman. I like the pumpkin rot snowman. Yeah. You should tell people who anyone pumpkin doesn't rot know is. who pumpkin rot yeah. is. <laughs> Go to pumpkinrot.com. <laughs> Just like it sounds. He's a kind of a dark Halloween artist and he went silent. He like, he fell off the grid for like over a year and he just now started this Halloween started posting again. I was seriously worried about him. I thought he was gone or something, but he's still around apparently because he started posting again. Pumpkinrot.com. I think he's done other movies too. Maybe not as, you know, big budget as this one, but. I know he did the snowman for this one. If you go and look at his website, you'll immediately see that when you see the snowman, you think of him. I like Domi. I like the grandma, even though I had to read everything she said. I caught a word every now and then. Is that I the liked German too. in high school? <laughs> Nobody listens to the elders. I don't know if there's a lesson there. Yeah. You know? she said but that's what i mean i I mean i know they had to fall asleep so that the fire would go out so they could be attacked but 
I never would have went to sleep. I would have been able to be throwing logs on the entire time. Omi saw some things. I mean, to have that happen to you as a child and then repeat as an old adult. Well, and would like I said, I felt like World War II. So she saw lots of stuff as a child. But yeah. And, and then even at have... the dinner table earlier, we didn't talk about it, but Aunt Dorothy at one point says, what are you, a Jew now? Yeah. <laughs> so there are kind of like, you know, undertones there, you know, about the whole She's seen some Second things. World War. Yeah. She's had some trauma. And then <sighs> she looks pretty old, like in her 80s. And to have that circle back around when you were, you know, eight or nine and have it come back 80 years later is sucky. So yeah. she's seen some things. Her Wikipedia page is in German. She played the part well. She looked traumatized. It makes you understand why the whole kitchen was full of treats because she wanted to make sure that the Christmas spirit was alive and well. But it can't be the fake stuff just because you decorate and stuff. You have to actually feel it, which yeah, I think she, is the she point. She was born in 1942. So just at the beginning of the Second World War. Well, doesn't, but her character. I know. Been born, you know. I'm just saying that's her age. So this guy likes traditions, huh? Because he had Sam with the Halloween traditions, and now he's got Krampus and with the Christmas traditions. He described this as um, the Christmas film that is both scary and sentimental. A Christmas Carol and It's a Wonderful Life are nightmares that show you these broken characters who experience a darker side of divine intervention. They need to be scared straight. Yeah, there's morals in it. Like I said, you can't just decorate. You have to feel the spirit of the season. So I'm ready to keep my fireplace burning, if nothing else. I have a gas fireplace, so. Still warm enough. I ain't going to keep it burning all night long. <laughs> well, then get ready for Krampus. Okay. I'll, I'll put on my costume. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just be like, take me to the underworld. <laughs> I'm ready. Make, make me your minion. <laughs> <laughs> I am here, oh, dark lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I've been training for years. Let's go grab some naughty children. <laughs> maybe that's where all the elves come from people like you could be all right karen what kind of cocktail rating are we giving this film how many cocktails did it take you to get through it it's about an hour and a half if that makes a difference <laughs> i mean it's pretty normal i thought it to be honest i thought it was going to be a four i did not think that i was going to like it it's kind of too modern for me i'm more of a old school movie kind of person but You're more I, of a traditionalist like michael doherty maybe <laughs> i like traditions i've tried to you know especially around christmas we do have traditions that i try to pass on to my kids we'll see uh that my mom has passed on to us so i, I would say three okay you know especially since i was expecting it to be a four i was surprised and I actually kind of liked it when I expected to really not like it. I kind of wish they would have done a little bit more of the history of Krampus. You know what I mean? Gave us a little more background. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, what they give you isn't really accurate either. It's. I just know. kind of feel like I still don't know who it, who it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I know he comes after naughty children and that's all I really no. So it would have been nice for him to throw a little of the folklore in there. I guess I like to learn. I should have looked it up. Do you, what do you know about Krampus? He's not an evil underworld person, is he? Being, I don't, does he live in the underworld? Does he live in the North Pole? What's. Well, the tradition is pre Christian, going well, back yeah. to pagan mythology, has. All things do. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, St. Nicholas is Christian. So is, did they bring him back around as a foe to St. Nicholas? Was it always just used well, as something to scare the kids? What, you know, what? I've seen things where they come together. Like St. Nicholas rewards is not the good children and Krampus 
punishes the naughty ones. They're the yin and yang. Yeah, but that would be after Christianity because St. Nicholas would be Christian. So there must have been a previous pagan ritual where he assists St. Nicholas, who is different from Santa Claus. Yes. Right? So you can't confuse. They can't say, you know, when I say he's with St. Nicholas, that doesn't mean he's with Santa Claus, right? Right. Two different things. Because <laughs> St. Nicholas Day is December 6th, isn't it? And Krampus knocked is December 5th. The night so, of December 5th. Yes. The so, pair, Decem- so Krampus and St. Nick, Nicholas, visit children on the night of December 5th. And Saint right. Nicholas, so you wake up in the morning, puts, puts uh, candy in your shoes. St. Nicholas rewards the well-behaved children with modest gifts. And My mom used to do that every once in a while, put candy in our shoes on and December. Krampus punishes the badly behaved children. <laughs> with, he beats them with birch rods. <laughs> he beats them. So instead of saying Santa's watching you when you're misbehaving, parents would say Krampus is watching. Maybe. Well, because kids didn't really get beaten with birch sticks, so it had to be. Didn't they? <laughs> I don't know. Well, not, not by Krampus. But yeah, that's the, uh, the Feast of St. Nicholas is celebrated on the 6th of December. On the preceding evening of the 5th, Krampus night or Krampus knock. That's when he appears in the streets, sometimes accompanying St. Nicholas and sometimes on his own. He just punishes the bad children. So, well, there must be, there's more to it than that. But oh yeah. There's a lot more of it. <laughs> I just wish, like I said, I just wish they'd have thrown a little in there and they don't, you don't even really see him that often. It would have been nice to, I don't know, have a little more tr- tradition. I guess it, you know, if it makes you curious enough, you go and find out. That is correct. And there are books on the subject. And then you have the Krampus Lauf, which is the parade when all the Krampuses come out. All the people in their Krampus costumes come out, march in the parades. Well, that's what I was asking. Do, are they going to have it in Cincinnati? And, I don't know. Well, it's nothing, nowhere near what they do, you know, in barbarian countries. So, Well, yeah, but the, if you look it up on YouTube, there are some amazing costumes. Yes, and they scare all the children. They might scare me. They try to scare on, the children. But. You know. He often has a basket on his back to put yeah, the kids in. Put the kids in, takes them away, and yeah, eats them <laughs> or something. <laughs> All right, three cocktails. Yeah. All right. What do you think of the our cocktail, Karen? Our Krampus cocktail. So it it's okay. I like it. It's not bad. <laughs> Once all the Everclear is gone, the vanilla yeah. is a nice. It's amazing how much smell affects your, the taste. You know, the van- smelling the vanilla is it's a nice touch. Mm-hmm. So anything we learned today, Karen? Keep the fire lit. <laughs> Keep your Christmas spirit. Be kind. Remember what it's about, which is basically kindness. And yeah, a lot of people, you know, get upset. Oh, it's all about gi- gifts and commerce. And I don't mind that so much. I always tell people it's never a bad thing to give someone you care about a gift you know that they'll enjoy. Now, if you feel pressure that you have to buy gifts, that's a different mindset. But the actual being thoughtful and finding something that you know someone that you care about will really enjoy, that's never a bad thing. You know, there is some pressure involved in trying to make everything perfect but well that's on you though that's on right but that's <laughs> right that's what i mean if you let that go and you think of it as doing something nice for someone you love it's not that it's not terrible i mean if you're forced to try to buy a present for your boss and you have no idea what <laughs> to get that's a completely different situation but your core group of people your tribe it's never a bad thing to bring a smile to someone's face to, to think, Hey, you know, you receive a gift and you think, wow, this person really thought about this and wanted to give me this gift, no matter what it is, how big or small. I think that's a, a nice thing. 
and the and the process of finding that special thing is kind of fun too. So I don't mind that it's commercial. I think it's all your mindset where you go with it. I agree. All right, Karen. I believe the next movie is your choice. It is. All right. What are we doing? We're doing a Christmas horror story. Okay. 2015 also. Have you seen that this one? No, also? I haven't. No. But okay. I watched I watched the trailer for it today, actually. Without knowing that I was gonna <laughs> pick it. It looked interesting. <laughs> it came up as a suggestion. I don't know. <laughs> Are you psychic? <laughs> are, are we going to have a cocktail for that film, Karen? We are going to have a cocktail, but I'm going to kind of freewheel it. Okay. So I have not seen the movie, but apparently William Shatner is in it and is kind of the master of ceremonies, maybe, or just a, see a storyteller or. Don't know. Never seen it, Karen. <laughs> narrator. Let's go with narrator. Okay. Let's and he that. drinks eggnog with bourbon and gets more intoxicated as the movie goes along so i'm saying we just get a nice cup of eggnog and you spike it with that whatever you want if you have brandy bourbon whatever well what do you think is is, what do you think was better bourbon or brandy most people drink brandy i have both (laughs) well you can i have have other things i have vodka i have lots of things but so eggnog is usually with Brandy or bourbon? It's usually with brandy. But I've seen Southern Comfort. Well, that's bourbon. That's so bourbon. it's it's usually bourbon or, or brandy. whiskey or whatever. Brandy is the most traditional. Is that not what I said? Yeah. But you can also use a mixture of dark rum and cognac. Cognac. I was gonna cognac. say rum. <laughs> rum, spiced rum might be nice. Yeah, it might be good. We recommend sticking to rum and cognac to preserve the nogs flavor those nogs those pesky nogs <laughs> so whatever's in your cupboard throw a little in with the eggnog and we'll talk about the movie yeah i might do it with the spiced rum I'm, I'm i've never actually had eggnog it's not my favorite but it's a holiday drink and so having a cup of it once in a while especially during the season not terrible with spiced rum <laughs> can't hurt no i think i've only ever had it with brandy hmm. maybe i'll have two <laughs> well you should taste test and let me know and then tell me which one's better maybe i'll have three i have bourbon brandy and spiced rum well you could have them during the week and then decide have your favorite that way you'll drink the whole thing yeah good so basically we need eggnog and whatever yeah Bourbon, brandy, spiced rum. Whatever lights your fire. Cognac, whatever. All right, Karen, anyone you need to thank or want to thank? I'll thank all future review writers. Okay. Because then I'll have someone to thank. Yes. Well, of course, I need to thank Verse 13 once again. Do you? Yes. For letting us use their music in the podcast. All music in the Scary Spirits podcast is provided by Verse 13. And their info is linked in the show notes. Check them out. Anything else, Karen? Please drink responsibly. Yes. Thanks so much for listening. Want to keep in touch? Check out our website, scaryspirits.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Scary Spirits Podcast. Find us on YouTube at Scary Spirits Podcast. If you have questions or comments, you can email us at info at scaryspirits.com. To help us grow the podcast, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You know, we really do appreciate your support. And as always, please drink responsibly. Mm-hmm.